As Anthem's February 22nd, 2018 launch looms on the horizon, there are still plenty of reasons to be cautious with one's optimism for BioWare's upcoming epic. On the one hand, the game does look gorgeous. Some of the mechanics, particularly where the flying and gliding is concerned, looks really fun. The verticality of the world is really cool to behold, and there is definitely potential for this game to be something special. On the other hand, what's been showcased so far basically revolves around moving from point A to point B, shooting some stuff, moving from point B to point C, rinse and repeat. We have been shown a lot of style, but I feel like not much has been shown in the way of substance. BioWare has loosely promised that despite Anthem's shared world multiplayer nature, players will have just as much of a good time in single player and that narrative won't be sacrificed. But then I start hearing about how traditional elements from Bioware games like dialogue options and romance have been downscaled or removed outright, and then I start to worry again. Despite Bioware's assurances that Anthem will feel like a Bioware game, the more I keep seeing and hearing of it, the more I feel like Anthem will fail to live up to that. Even beyond that though, one telltale sign of a potentially troubled development history for a game is when your best developers start leaving a studio in the middle of development. You may recall that during Mass Effect Andromeda's development, key Bioware members left in droves, chief among them being Casey Hudson himself, though he did eventually return after Andromeda's release. With a lack of competent management and with all the in-office politics, working at Bioware throughout Andromeda's development was a pretty dreadful experience by numerous accounts. And now, if you look at Anthem's development history, there is no denying that a similar pattern becomes noticeable. Soon after Andromeda's disastrous release, Aaron Flynn left his position as studio head to be replaced with Casey Hudson. Late last year, lead animator for Anthem, Stephen Gilmore, who had been with Bioware for 17 years working on games like Knights of the Old Republic, the Mass Effect trilogy, and Dragon Age Inquisition, also left the company. Perhaps most notable of all was the departure of Drew Kirpashian earlier this year, who was one of the more prominent figures over at Bioware, having served as lead writer for renowned titles like Knights of the Old Republic and Mass Effect 1 and 2. And now it would seem as though another longtime veteran has departed from the studio, this time none other than 22-year Bioware veteran James Olin. The following information comes from James' Twitter account, where he made an official announcement about his retirement from the studio with the following statement. After 22 years, I have retired from Bioware. I've loved my time with Anthem, Star Wars, Dragon Age, and Dungeons and Dragons, but I need to take a break from the industry and work on something a little smaller and more personal. Now, if you don't know James Olin, well, he was a pretty big deal, serving as lead designer for some of Bioware's most well-known classics. He was the designer for Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, he was designer for Neverwinter Nights, designer for Knights of the Old Republic, and director of Bioware's MMO Star Wars game The Old Republic. He was also, of course, working on Bioware's upcoming shared world third-person shooter Anthem, and his departure is rather untimely, considering the game is only a few months out. Suffice to say that Drew is what you might call one of few key remnants of the Bioware of old, who has also decided to pursue other ventures. The reasoning he provided was that he needed to take a break from the gaming industry to work on something smaller and more personal, which seems to be why a lot of veteran developers are leaving AAA game development. Burnout has become a rather prominent issue in the gaming industry due to how demanding the work is, especially given the current landscape with all the discouraging hostility against the likes of EA and Bioware, who people have lost a lot of faith in over the past few years. As for what James intends to pursue next, he's thinking about returning to the world of Dungeons & Dragons and building his own adventures for the popular tabletop role-playing game at his new publishing venture, Arcanum Worlds, noting how the most fun he ever had at Bioware was during the good old days as lead designer for titles like Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 and Neverwinter Nights, all of which take place in D&D setting of the Forgotten Realms. I do wish this fellow, who contributed so much to some of Bioware's most beloved games, all the luck in the world for his future pursuits. But as I watch all these key Bioware veterans leave the studio one by one, I am rather conflicted. I do keep wondering what this all means for the studio's future. 
I'd like to think that upcoming titles like Anthem, Dragon Age 4, and whatever the next Mass Effect game turns out to be are in good hands, but as more years go by, less of the Bioware that brought us the most seminal experiences remain. It feels like Bioware is becoming less Bioware with every passing month and year, and it's hard for me not to worry that the studio will eventually lose its identity entirely. It's kind of like how if one can really call the current Bungie the same Bungie that brought us Halo, or today's Infinity War the same studio that brought us the first Call of Duty Modern Warfare. If the Rare of today is the same studio that that brought us titles like Donkey Kong Country, Banjo-Kazooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Goldeneye, and Perfect Dark. Similarly, can we truly look at the Bioware of today, with so much key staff gone, and say that it's the same Bioware that brought us Baldur's Gate, MDK, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Jade Empire, the original Mass Effect trilogy, and Dragon Age Origins? People are currently holding out on the possibility that Bioware may one day return to the glory days, but will it ever be possible for the studio to live up to that as it continues to hemorrhage its best developers? Will the new generation of developers be able to step their game up and turn things around for the studio under the leadership of Casey Hudson? I won't lie to you, as it stands, given how much Bioware standards for quality have fallen lately, given how detrimental EA as a publisher has proven to be, can't say that I'm all that confident. Granted, Anthem already seems to be a few calibers more refined than Andromeda, even in its early incomplete state. But still, when I look at it, I'm just not very excited. It's bombastic, pretty, and cool looking for sure, but all I see is mainstream style and appeal with very little of that good old Bioware substance. Maybe that outlook will change once the game releases and I've had a chance to play the game extensively, but it's strange to me that so much of the marketing's focus is being placed on bombastic action rather than nuanced story. I must also question whether Bioware veterans are feeling something similar, like the Bioware magic has been lost and in turn want to move on to personal ventures to feel that magic and passion again through other pursuits. This is all conjecture on my part, but the aura emanating from Bioware currently, for me at least, is very dispassionate and that is concerning. And I hate that I feel this way because I remember a time when any time the Bioware logo came up, I used to get really excited, it was like this seal that told me this is gonna be an awesome game. But now whenever I see that logo I just question everything and it's strange. It's just uh, not like it used to be. I don't know, maybe this is just me, I'd love to hear what you think. Does James Olin's departure reinforce your concerns for Bioware? Or do you have faith that Bioware's Anthem will be able to deliver that spark of magic that's been missing from the studio? Let us know in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my content and would like to support this channel directly, consider donating on Patreon. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.